What's up, my am B-Thug And this is my man Dave One Welcome to our studio With Fact TV Private Sector Studios Burbank, California We've been in the studio, in this studio, for a year and a half. We came to Los Angeles because we, I mean, this is gonna be our fifth album, and we are at the stage in our careers where for P and I to make music in a vacuum it is cool, but I feel like, you know, we've done it so much and we wanted to, we wanted a new challenge. And that challenge was to work in a more collaborative way, whether it's, you know, checking out what it feels like to work with other writers or producers or session players. I mean, we've always done every single thing ourselves. Right, P? I mean, yeah. it's always so been... It's also about expanding our writing vocabulary. Yeah, that's, that's what I was trying to say, yes. <laughs> We're kind of a New York band. I mean, Montreal slash New York band, but we wanted to feel like, all right, we're going to set up shop in L.A. to make this album kind of like a la Steely Dan Asia, one of those, you know, 70s, kind of real slick New York band and Los Angeles kind of albums. So Burbank was perfect, you know, kind of like a, a 70s looking studio was perfect. And as it happens, a lot of the players that we have on this album live in Burbank or, or around here. So it was perfect. So pretty. We'll walk you guys through a bunch of synths that we've used a lot on our albums. Um, they're sort of part of our sonic palette. I guess the one that we use the most is the Juno 106. Yeah, hence having two of them. Having two, because we use a MIDI, so we need them both at the same time. We get this question a lot. What synth do you recommend if I want to start? Mm -hmm. And I give the same answer every time. Start with a Roland Juno 106. Yeah, it's cheap, it's affordable, it's super versatile and you can start learning synthesis on it because it's simple to understand and you get a lot of punch out of it. Should we go to the mode? Obvious. You know, you can't, you can't really make funk without that one. We couldn't afford a Moog back in the day, so we would do all our bass sounds on the Juno, right? Like on the Fancy Footwork album. We use that so much. Another key ingredient is the Prophet 5, obviously. Another synth that we couldn't afford to have in the early days of Chromio, but as soon as, I think we got it around the third album. Funk. So it's mono, so it sits, you know, when this is really wide stereo, you can put that in the middle on top, right? And then P will do like a different voicing of the chord and it sort of complements, it gels nicely. So we use that one with, with chords, right? A lot of like... Yeah, mostly chords. Like that. We'll just layer a chorus with this. Let's check the talk box out. Yeah. Ooh, this is the vocoder sound with a talk box. And that's the real thing, baby, baby, baby. That's my talk box, yeah, baby. The sound that goes in it is not that important. You need a straight sawtooth sound, and it's all about what you do with it. So at the end of the day, it's getting filtered so many times. From the synth to your mouth. And it's all about your skill. Some people that have seen previous in the studio interviews of us, we used to work on a Pentium 2. We've done four albums on a 1997 Pentium 2 with a Cakewalk from 1997 as well. You can't even buy the Pentium 2 anymore, so we would have to go to like Salvation Army in the junk pile and get a new one. Now we switched and we're using Cubase because it looks like Cakewalk. So for me, when I program it, this is beautiful to me. Like, if I can do this, I'm good. Because I can play with all the velocities, 
just the same way I did it on Cakewalk. And the same way I've been making beats since the 90s <laughs> on Cakewalk or whatever. So I love Cubase for the MIDI. And then for the audio, it's cool too. So we usually, we basically um, produce on Cubase. And then when it's time to do vocals, we'll go to Pro Tools. The only other producer that I know works like that is um, Surcut. He also has the two. So let's say we make a track. We'll do it all in Cubase. We'll arrange it in here. And then we'll just go to Pro Tools when it's time to record vocals or, you know, kind of guitars and any kind of overdubs, so to speak. So let's get to my favorite of the whole collection, P. This uh, Helta Syntax. Popularized by Jean-Michel Jarre. How would you describe that? First of all, it's Italian. This is like having two Prophet Fives going through a Juno 106 chorus. Self-oscillating, it's just like... What does that mean to you when you say self-oscillating? At some point when the resonance is so nice and crisp, it starts making a note by itself. So. Oh wow. So you can turn all the oscillators off and you're still... You're still getting the filter making notes and oscillating. All right, Elka Syntax. What else we got? This is an early M1. This is a late Fairlight early M1. So sort of these are between. samples, right? Yeah, these are sample based, but you still have a filter board on it. So you can filter your samples. Uh, you can attack the case sustain and do a lot of things. So it's basically like as if the oscillators in here were samples. You, you, you still get the filter section of it. What did you do instead of uh, having the... Um, so I modified it. it. Instead of using uh, these, which work on this one, but it's easier to sort of load them from the computer. There's all the voice banks are online. You just have to find a way to connect the computer to this, which I did. So mine has a USB plug in the back. I basically made it into modern era. Plug the USB goes onto my computer and I can Except load. it takes half an hour to load a patch. I mean, every patch is, takes half an hour, yes, but... So load... <laughs> under control of Macintosh. So there's tutorials to learn how to do this online. You just have to have the patience and the tools to do it. There you go, the classic piano. I love that. Do that classic again? Classic EMU piano. It's so pretty. Beast. These guys are all sort of one synthesizer that's split up into five or six voices. This is literally having eight small synthesizers. So basically the powerful thing about this is that normally the Jupiter 8 has eight voices, which is eight small synthesizers inside the machine. You can have four voices, but having one on each side, left and right, which creates a monster. This is basically like having two Prophet Fives playing at the same time, one on the left, one on the right. Basically, the only problem with this, these sorts of things, like this or the OBX even, they're so big and powerful that they take up the whole mix and the whole frequency range. <laughs> So it's hard to add. It's hard to add even drum machines or guitars or bass sounds or other patches. It's really hard to fit them in. It's so rich. It just covers the whole spectrum. We've built our synth collection over 10 years. It's not obviously right now we have a lot of really cool ones, but we were making Chromio records with two or three synths, right? Like our breakout album was made with four or five? Yeah. You don't need to have everything. Moog Prodigy, sequential six track, Juno. sequential drum tracks, and a Juno. Yeah, that's, we made that's all, all the fancy first album on that. Yeah. yeah, so like, you know, obviously now we have a lot of nice things, but when you build a synth collection, you can start small and just kind of like, it takes 10 years and you just get your dream, you know, your dream arsenal.
one of the things that makes this room special is the fact that every keyboard is plugged in at all times. Our music has always been built on 95% analog synths. And so we need to be able to access and mobilize all that gear at the same time, all the time. So that's why we have, you know, like sort of like a clunky board behind us because everything is plugged in and ready to go. It also reminds us of being kids and, and going to music shops, you know, in the keyboard room where everything was always plugged in. <laughs> Our new album comes out next spring. We have a first single that comes out next month. I'm not crazy about being away from home. I'm still not quite used to it, but, um, but when we're both in this space, I realized that there's no way we could find a studio like this with all the resources and the fact that we can have people come in and do sessions here. I mean, it's, there's nowhere else where this would be possible. So once we're inside, Hopefully it stays this way, but there's absolutely nothing that makes us unhappy. <laughs>